Now, when you say that, you know, you won back all 22 local governments within six weeks, because uh, it would seem that that's how the story, that's not how, well, that's not what a lot of Nigerians remember. Well, Besides, uh, some people will say that the fight against terrorism is not just about winning back territory. There's also the part of the insurgency. Do you, are you saying that, you know, right. everything will be won? Is it really possible to win the fight against terrorism? In that re regard, especially when it well, has to do let with me insurgency? Refresh let me refresh your memory, um, and I'm saying that if Nigerians or some Nigerians don't know, I would like to refresh their memories because it's all very well, because a lot of people appear to have short memories now. The fact of the matter is, at the time of the election, that is the, 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 the time the election was conducted, the previous administration had recovered every single local government area that had been previously taken by Boko Haram, um, um, you know, back from them. We had, we had regained our territory. That is a fact, whether like anybody likes to accept it or not. The other fact, which I'd like to remind you and Nigerians of, is this, that initially, two, three years ago, Boko Haram was bombing in, in Abuja, bombing in Kaduna, bombing in Kanu, bombing all over the north central area. The only place they weren't bombing um, uh, was in the south, even though they tried to do that, but luckily they didn't succeed. By the time, by the, time the previous government got down to it, bombings in Abuja and the north central, Kaduna, Kanu, and so on and so forth, had stopped. And the war had been pushed into the northeast and systematically, inch by inch, mile by mile, our army took back the northeast from Boko Haram and pushed them into Sambiza Forest. These are the facts. And I don't think that we should run away from those facts. The fact that we are not uh, in a position to say that today doesn't mean to say we didn't achieve it yesterday. And by the way, let me also clarify this. I was not a member of the previous administration. I was a spokesman uh, of the campaign organization for the previous administration, and I'm very proud of that. And I was a member of the PDP, and I still am, and I'm a, a very good friend of the administration, but I certainly wasn't a member of that administration. But I am one of those that admire what they managed to do in the closing weeks before the election. And I think we should, we should always remember that. Well, some people will say that Sambisa, which you say was an exception, is also a part of the country. So when you say that they claim back everywhere apart from Sambisa <laughs> forest, it's a part of Nigerian territory. Aside that, uh, there is well, also like, like the I question... Like, like I said, the exception is... Like I said, the exception is Sambisa. That's why I said except for. Very much part of the country. And uh, there are reasons why that wasn't taken. But let, let's, let's give them 9 out of 10. I mean, let's not get fixated about what happened in the past. Let's talk about what's happening now. The double speak, the deceit, the lies, the government by propaganda, and so on and so forth. Chief, and by the to, way, the violation of civil liberties, and so in, on yeah. and so forth. Uh, Chief, because uh, the reason I bring back Sambisa sure. is because Sambisa is happening in now. We understand that Sambisa uh, has been cleared by the territory. That, that, at least that's what the military said. They've cleared Sambisa for us. But away from that, you say that cash was bought on the black market that. with raw cash. I'm, Think about the arms was bought on the black market with raw cash. Um, one would have to ask, were all the arms, talking about uh, tanks, guns, were everything bought with raw cash? Well, first of all, uh, let me just say, let me just put a lie to what you've just said now, or what you say the military. It is not true that San Pisa Forest has been retaken by the military. They may say that, one or two of them may say that, but that is not true. I wish it were. I'm a great supporter and a great friend of the military. I'm consistent on that, and I wish them well. But unfortunately, that hasn't happened, and other local government areas in Nigeria have been taken by Boko Haram. Um, but on the issue of procurement of arms, you'd have to put those questions to those that were in the business of buying arms, the, maybe officers of the previous government and so on and so forth. But what I do know, the little I know, and I said it at the time, if you remember, I was on this program, was that it, is, it was impossible for us to buy arms from anywhere in the world at the time. Our hands had effectively been tied by, by some of our closest allies, ironically, including the government of the Minister of Defense of the United Kingdom that the president hosted the other day. As a consequence of that arms embargo, many of our soldiers and our civilians were being killed on a daily basis. The previous administration had to dig deep, use their imagination, and procure arms with cash. This is my understanding, this is what happened, and this is what they did. And they bought, you know, very, very sophisticated arms. I mean, it's possible to do that. Well, and they did it, and thankfully they did it, and consequently they regained territory. So the idea that it never happened is simply not true.
Well, yesterday we did speak with I the mean, minister. You know, did the, it, yeah, we, we did speak with the minister of sorry, information. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem. We, we spoke with the minister yesterday about the same matter in terms, in the light of those recent attacks, and he said, "Look, what he says is that." At the moment, Boko Haram cannot carry out any, in his words, spectacular attacks. You may still have uh, suicide bombers here and there as, you, as an offshoot of how cells operate, but they have completely decimated their capacity to carry out those spectacular attacks while they continue the fight against terrorism. I take real exception to the words of the minister that said, I don't know which minister it was, Information. but I take exception to that. Spectacular attacks, they've put us, what does that mean? On Christmas day, many dozens of our citizens were blown to pieces in, uh, in Borno state. Again, on the 27th of this month, December, more of our citizens were slaughtered in Maiduguri. Again, on the 28th of this month and 29th of this month, more of our citizens were blown to pieces and killed in Adamawa State. How much more spectacular does he want it to be? Nigerians are being slaughtered. People are being killed. These are human beings. Now, I don't glorify that. I don't, I don't, it's, it's not something that I take pleasure in saying. I say it in pain. I say it with pain. And I'm saying that they need to sit up and stop giving themselves, themselves a hundred uh, out 100% pass marks and get down to the job, do the work, stop the insurgency, get, uh, gain back our territory, help our military, procure the arms that they need, and by the way, they haven't bought any since they came into power, and, 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 and make progress in this war. And they need to carry us along by telling us the truth. And not to say things like the media is to blame because the media is reporting these things and therefore giving oxygen uh, to, to Boko Haram. Nothing could be further from the truth. The media has a duty to tell the truth, tell Nigerians what's going on, and allow them to know how well their government are faring and what our people are going through. And I uh, hope they continue to do that. But, but I have a, a question for you, but before that, I, I want to take you back. If you say you were not a member of the last administration, how did you get to know that arms were not bought? Well, how did I get to know that arms were not bought? I said arms were bought, not that they were not. But how did you know that arms were bought, I meant to say? But because, 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 because I made the necessary research and inquiries, and I spoke to the relevant people, and I saw the evidence of it, because I, I went out of my way to check it out. And that's why I was confident enough to stand up to speak for that administration uh, during the, the presidential campaign. You know, th there's ample evidence. Now, let me just put this to you. If arms were not bought, as we're being made to believe, how on earth could 22 local government areas and the whole of Nigerian territory, all of Nigerian territory, apart from Sabiza Forest, how could it have been taken back in the space of a few months? I mean, did our military use Molotov cocktails, bricks, and stones to fight the most sophisticated and the most deadly terrorist organization on the planet? I think not. Let's get real. Arms were bought. Arms were bought with cash. Progress was made. And let's move on from there. Let's you know, talk about you, what's you, going you, on now. You know, and I think that the least our government is to be honest with us. Honestly, in moving ahead, but we still have to talk about some of these things you have uh, highlighted. Very quickly here, you're a lawyer, sure. without, without delving into the matter, so that, uh, well, subject is, we're talking about the AMS uh, trial going on. Uh, doesn't it also amaze you that no one has come forward to say X amount of money was used to procure arms, as you have said, that arms were actually bought? Doesn't it worry you? Well, I think, I th I th I think, that, you may I think that you may find that when the trial begins, um, you know, that a lot of things will come out that will shock a lot of Nigerians. When the truth begins to unfold, a lot of people will come to understand that, number one, it is not true that money that was procured for arms was used for other means. I don't believe that for one minute, even though that's the narrative that's being played out. I don't accept, I don't believe that. And I think it's important to wait to hear what the defense has to say. In all these matters, there are always two and sometimes even three sides to a story. I have absolute confidence uh, in, in the innocence of those that have been accused of wrongdoing. I will not be swayed by media reports. I will not be swayed by the kind of information that's being leaked out to the media by those that wish to prosecute these people. I will wait to hear what they have to say. And I have every reason to believe that evidence will be adduced to show that these things are lies. And by the way, since we're on this issue, let me, let me tell you one of the other concerns that was raised inside that open letter, which I think is appropriate for me to touch on right now. You know, last night, 
um, Colonel Sambo Dasuki was released uh, from Kujay's prison. He managed to satisfy all his conditions of bail. He was released from the prison and he, and he was rearrested again. And he was taken back to the SSS headquarters where he is as we speak. Uh, and this was completely against the order that was given by the court uh, as part of the terms and conditions of his bail that under no circumstances should be, he be rearrested and taken anywhere without the permission of the court. And this is a violation of civil liberties. If you want to prosecute somebody for corruption or anything, I believe that it's the right and proper thing to do, and we support that. But for goodness sake, do it within the confines of the law. Stop violating court orders. Stop violating people's civil liberties and human rights. Stop putting out lies about them. Get real, do your job, and let's see what the truth really is by going to court. I, I know, surely, in the days to come, in, in the, days to come the government should uh, get a reply to some of these uh, issues raised in that particular letter. You were also concerned about the recent development in Kaduna State, uh, where you spoke about uh, the issue, the yeah. clash between Shite and the military. Yeah. 